Two weeks into the 2019 NFL season, we asked ourselves, how much further will this demonic plague of early season injuries spread? We'll also discuss who's good, who's bad, who needs to panic, and who needs to relax. This is Beyond the Blitz. What's up, guys? This is Beyond the Blitz. I'm Justin Rogers. I'm Brandon Wells. And I'm Ayende Roberts. And it is good to be back with you guys. I think we're about two weeks removed from our last podcast, and it is good to have football back. Can you guys say the same? Yeah. Absolutely. You can guarantee you'll be getting a lot more of these podcasts this year, but I think we'll be doing them bi-weekly in season, right? Oh, definitely. We it, def- It's really great. There's this palpable excitement that hasn't really have in sports that hasn't really been felt since even the NBA Finals didn't have this and it's really great to have that feeling again. Yeah, that is definitely true. Well, we're going to start today with the recap of the first two weeks. So we're going to do the first big games, four big games for the first week because of the season opener. Then we're going to do three big games of week two. So Ayende, what you got for us? First game we're talking about. Oh, season opener is the Packers and the Bears and my, my, what a slog of a game. Uh, look, I'm, I'm, a pa- I'm a huge Packers fan, as everyone knows, and I will take my wins, but that game was a snooze. It felt like e- both teams were missing something, but the Bears especially felt like they were missing a lot, especially on the offensive side. It like Mitch Trubisky, could, he couldn't make a throw to save his life. The defense still looked pretty solid. I don't think there's they're going to have any issues on that front, but as we will see in later in the next week, maybe that, that may not be the case. Justin, I know you got some thoughts, though. So. All right, come on. Like, if anybody has been listening or has seen our podcast from last year, last semester, you've heard from us that the Super Bowl was awful. It was boring. The season opener was just that. I thought we'd get a good game. I mean, yeah. you got the Packers, pretty decent offense. Defense got better. The Bears, like, their offense was decent last year. And then their defense, like, best in the league. I definitely think we saw that in Week 2 as well. The Bears, I think that their offense was atrocious just like you were saying like i already said on the broadcast i think david montgomery should have gotten the ball more they should have involved Tariq cohen more and i will say this though how bad the bears offense was that packers defense definitely stepped up when it needed to i think it the offseason moves that they made really helped them no matter the outcome of the game this is my argument is why the nfl is not scripted because after the super bowl from last year snooze fest 13 to 3 people wanted more nfl it finally comes back, and what do we get? A 10-3 to 3 snooze fest. It, it just it leaves us wanting more. And so the NFL's not scripted, at least we know, because the NFL would want an exciting game off the gate. Hey, but here's the thing. The Bears kicker can kick, though. The Bears <laughs> kicker can kick. <laughs> All right, what Scored other... the whole three points in that entire game. That's true. All right, what game we got next? So week one had a, actually a lot of really, really good games. I know there's one game that we're going to talk about later, but... I'm just, I'm sorry, Justin. We gotta talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, the Patriots game. 33 to 3. How do you feel about that, man? I feel like the Patriots are a really good team and that our defense, I mean, okay, we had a backup safety in. Our safety was not in on that game, got burned the entire game. Our offense could not get it together. Juju Smith Schuster was facing arguably the best corner in the NFL and Stephon Gilmore. We had. We couldn't really run the ball at all um, because we were playing from behind basically the entire game. So we had to pass the ball, and Dante Moncrief is one of the worst receivers in the NFL because he can't catch. Uh, (laughs) In my opinion, uh, Dante, somehow, if you're listening to this, um, please don't take this to offense. I hope that we release you and you go to a great team and play well there, Um, but just not in Pittsburgh, please. Um, (laughs) So uh, that's what I think about that game. I think we have a better season ahead of us, though. Yo, if Dante Moncrief, if you're listening to this podcast, give us a shout out. Please give us a shout out. Disregard everything I just said. <laughs> yeah, that, the signing of Antonio Brown, like that, didn't play a factor in this week. But when, but seeing that score, and you're like, oh, and this is, oh, you have Antonio Brown coming on the pipe. What, what secondary can stop that receiving core? Yeah, like it's 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 insane. Right? Yeah. All right. So what's the next game you got for us? We got two more left. Yeah, we do. This was an interesting one. I know we have um, very mixed feelings about this this Bengals Seahawks game. Twenty one to twenty in favor of the Seahawks. Who should have won that game? 
Well, the Seahawks should have won. That's why they did win. But my, the Bengals came out there and they played. They played football. They look good, but also, is it really surprising? When we looked last year, they went six and one, six and two at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So I will say that offense looked pretty good, though. I, I will say that John Ross had an amazing game. The fact that they lost, didn't lose a step on offense. I mean, what else could you really lose? They weren't that really that good on offense last year, but they didn't really lose a step missing AJ Green. I don't think they miss AJ Green that much except maybe some red zone targets. But I thought, you know, they had a pretty good game. Seahawks definitely deserved to win that game, but the fact that the Bengals made it close one was a surprise to me. Yeah, if no. you think about it a little bit, the Bengals have a decent offense. You have Joe Mixon the running back. I've always been high on Eddie Dalton. He's not great, but he's good enough. And then you have Tyler Boyd, Tyler Eifert, AJ Green when healthy, now John Ross. That's a pretty tough receiving core downfield too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we're going to move on to, I believe, our final game. Of final this, game. Of week one. Of week one. Surprise, surprise, Lions-Cardinals, the first tie of the year, 27-27. Kyler Murray, not, I mean, color me impressed. It wasn't the best showing, but, I mean, do play football. If I'm using a crown to color you, it's not impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never really been high on Kyler. If you listen to our draft broadcast, you'll know that. I don't think he's bad. I think that he has potential, but... I mean, I'm not impressed yet, yeah. per se. I think the fourth quarter showed a lot of who he is. Um, but the fact that he only showed up in the fourth quarter, you can't do that against NFL defenses. You can't. The fact that he tested this against the Lions was great for him because the Lions aren't really, even though they have a defensive-minded head coach, still not a good defense, um, not the best defense. But uh, I thought that was a really good game. Just watching Kyler come back was very entertaining for me. Yeah, so, uh, and that's the thing is like I'm not gonna acquiesce. I'm gonna acquiesce and like I'm, I don't think Kyler Murray is like gonna be the savior of the Cardinals, but he at least made that game really entertaining. Definitely, like, he made he made that game fun to watch. And even Hawkinson had a pretty great game, 131 yards and a touchdown in his debut. That's not that's not not terrible. bad for a rookie. No, not bad at all. All right, what you got for week two? Hold on, before we move on to week two, I just want to touch a little bit on the Browns Titans game. Not too much about it, but the Browns. It looked too good week one, so maybe we'll look at that a little bit more moving forward. Right, definitely. Yeah, so we're going to move on. Moving on to week two, a lot of great football this week. Seahawks-Steelers. This was uh, Steelers 0-2 for the first time since 2013. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, here's what I'm going to say about this game. Seahawks didn't win the game. We lost the game. That We made way too many mistakes. That drop interception um the drop pass that led to an interception by Moncrief that's inexcusable you are being paid like a number two wide receiver please play like a number two wide receiver and then like that penalty that we had that's also inexcusable but also like that's not the end of the world because it was only a difference of four points and they probably still would have gone down the field the biggest thing was our consistency. We had no consistency on defense. First half, we were phenomenal. We were getting to Russell Wilson. It was fantastic to see. And then second half, we just let him run all over our defense. That wasn't good to see. Third down in 17s, and they're getting 16. Russell Wilson is getting a 16-yard gain. Don't want to see that out of your defense. But here's what I will say, the bright spot for our team. Mason Rudolph looked good. Now, he, he didn't look great, but he looked good enough to get us close to the win. I believe if if the Seahawks did not go for it on fourth down and won and they kicked the field goal, I think that we could have at least had a chance to go down and score. I think there's a reason why they went for it on fourth and one because not that they're afraid of Mason Rudolph, but he's looking pretty good. Why would you want to kick the ball back to him? Yeah. That was also a good. I agree with your statement. Like you, you guys, Seahawks didn't win. You guys lost. You guys that first half, we were you were explosive. Mm -hmm. It was insane to see it's such a like your defense was swallowing Russell Russell Wilson. He could like it was it was almost impossible for him. Yeah. But then you just sort of slacked off. It seems like it feels like another team that we're not gonna mention. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't want to talk about the Steelers the entire time for this yes. game. Russell Wilson did have a good game. I will say that he he's one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. So nothing against Russell Wilson, but I just feel like our defense just didn't play as well as we thought we would. Did the Seahawks have the most improved O line of the year? I Last think year they so. had the worst. I probably. think well, <laughs> the past three years they've had the worst. Yeah. So I yeah definitely most improved offensive line I could say. And. Moving on, we're going to talk about the 16-14 Bears-Broncos game with Pin Pinario winning the game-winning 53-yard field goal. So my dad's a uh, diehard Broncos fan. He texted me right after the game, and he was like, I'm done with the NFL for this year. He's not watching anymore. <laughs> the Broncos should have won that game. I'm sorry, Bears. Yeah, there was a kind of soft roughing the passer penalty that went against the Bears earlier in that game from the Broncos, so maybe you could make the argument that 
they're kind of even that out the spread but still the way that roughing the passer penalty came in in that time of the game the broncos on the bears the alleged that never happened put the bears where they needed to be to they made a field goal you got to say that about the bears but it was they a, should not have ever been in that position to yeah, make that was that a field 50 goal. that was a 50 plus yard field 52 goal. yards 52 yards so that was impressive from him the fact that he made that was amazing kind of, it's i think it's the same thing you could have said about that nfc championship game we had it, that pass interference call that made the game but also i think greg zerloin made like a 54 yard field goal to win the game so it's the same kind of thing i would say about this game the one thing i want to point out about what i've seen from the broncos so far this year is that philip Lindsay is isn't even leading the team in uh carries right now royce freeman's getting just as many carries right now as philip Lindsay is and i think that's an interesting way to go on denver's part so what could potentially be so far game of the year the falcons and the eagles julio jones my man my man <laughs> i'm a falcons fan and i think that so far as to this point it's the game of the year matt ryan ooh, looked bad through seven picks all last season already a five this year got some kinks to work out i'm kind of nervous about that our two first round offensive linemen that we got in the draft last year both went down so that's always fun to see right but our defense Oh boy, do I love our defense. Without those picks, we win that game by four scores. I Top remember, three defense easily. Me and me and Brandon were talking and I and I kept telling whatever Atlanta will possibly win, depending on what team they what team they show what what it Falcons team shows up and they showed up. Matt then, Ryan didn't, but our yeah. team did. So just to show you don't need a quarterback to win big games. Yeah. And here's why I, I think the biggest disappointment from a fantasy perspective is Devontae Freeman. I don't know why. He's getting carries, but he's not getting yards. What did you say? Ito Smith. Ito Smith had almost 30 more yards than Freeman on like seven less carries or something like that. Yeah. Ito Smith is the star of our team. Devontae Freeman, I don't think he started Cowboy anymore. The injury hurt him too much. He's getting paid a lot to do nothing. And yeah. as a Falcons fan perspective, Freeman kind of scares me. But on the other side, I don't want to spend all my time on the Falcons like he was the Steelers. The Eagles didn't look bad you know it was a good game the receivers couldn't catch everything nelson algalore looked like nelson algalore from the past but also their top two receivers were out you gotta think about that too alshon That's jeffrey true. got hurt and so did deshaun jackson That's true. i think that would have been a different game because deshaun jackson on that deep ball that's true because if it was deshaun jackson instead of nelson aguilar right there I think that would have been completely different. Nothing against Nelson Aguilar. He had some good catches that game, and he had a good game, except for that one drop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on, next segment we want to talk about what I said in the intro, played of injuries all around the league. Quarterbacks are leaving the league like it's nobody's business. Okay, I'm, for those who don't, I'm a huge wrestling fan, and there was a year where wrestlers were getting injured left and right. This is worse than that year. This is insane, and there's just so many big ones. Yes. Guys, just pick one. All right, so here, here's what we're going to do. We're each going to pick one. All right, I'm going to list all the quarterbacks that are out or in Andrew Luck's case, retired. And then we're going to just go over, okay, the injury and then the backup. All right, so we've got Andrew Luck, Nick Foles, Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees, Sam Darnold, Trevor Simeon, Cam Newton, and Eli Manning. Boys, let's pick a quarterback. I mean, I think that the biggest one on that list is Drew Brees. Definitely, that is the player on that team that takes you from a Super Bowl contender to eight and eight contender. I think that without Drew Brees, the Saints are hurt, and Teddy Bridgewater came up and did next to nothing for his team and got smacked in the revenge game against the Rams. I think that's huge for the Saints, which opens the division up for Atlanta, who I think is the only other contender in that division. Just I'm a Falcons fan, but you know it's it's true. The Saints are they're in trouble without Brees. He's out for six weeks, so we'll see how they can do without him. Yep. What I think is that, so three of these teams have quality backups. The Colts, the Steelers, and the Saints. I think with Drew Brees, um, I think Teddy Bridgewater can do fine. He can w at least win half of the games and keep them in. I want to say, I think the team that might be in the most trouble, definitely the Jaguars. They, are, I think they were riding on Nick Foles. I think as a Nick Foles fan, I feel bad for him. I seriously do. Like, I really want him to succeed on a team that's not the Eagles. Gardner Mitchu, he looked pretty good for a rookie. I will say for a rookie, he looked good. But also, like, I just think that the Jaguars, I mean, people's expectations for that team went down since Nick Foles got hurt. I don't think that that team is in a lot of trouble. That team has more problems than quarterback. Gardner Minshew, he's a caliber quarterback. He should start in the NFL. I think by the time Nick Foles is healthy and ready to come back, they shouldn't do it. 
keep Minshew in there. He's young. Get the boy some talent. Let him improve. Ball. He has potential. I wouldn't say the same thing like about like Teddy Bridgewater coming in for Drew Brees, but mm-hmm. I feel like he's a good backup. I mean, he could be a starter for almost any team in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So, all right, what do you think, IMD? I feel like this is this is one that I think is interesting because it's not necessarily an injury per se, um, but Sam Darnold dealing uh, with mono. It's not necessarily like a super, not an injury injury per se, but like it is with, with a Jets team that is still even even with Aqua, even with the new acquisition, which we'll get to later. The the team still still feels so fragile, and losing Sam Darnold, who even like the last year wasn't the best, but he still but he still produced decent numbers for a Jets team that needed that needed somebody that needed a leader, you know, and not having that and that might that might put a dent in. The Jets season. And their backup is injured, too. Trevor Simeon out. Same game he came in. Who did the Jets have a quarterback? I don't know. Who is he? Luke Falk. Is that who it is? Yeah. Quarter. Oh. I think it's Luke Falk is his name. I know he's a quarterback. Second-year guy out of Washington State. Same place that uh, Gardner Minshew mm. went to college. So, produce some okay quarterbacks. We'll so. see. All right, guys. So, now it's time to talk about some of these trades that have been going on. So, let's just talk about the biggest trade that has happened. Okay. Megan Fitzpatrick has been traded to the Steelers. I don't know the details as much, but I know it's a first-round pick. Uh, I know the Steelers get a little bit in return. Um, um, Brandon's looking it up right now, uh, can give a little bit of information to us. So, Ayende, what do you think about this trade, my guy? This is going to be... It's an interesting It's an interesting acquisition for a, a steel, for the Steelers. Um, it's, it's going to be... I don't, I'm not. I'm not so sure. I'm. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I'm really. It, it seems like it's. It'll be fit. He fits the scheme pretty well. I don't think coming. He should have left the Dolphins because it's the Dolphins. But, <laughs> um. But yeah. I'm. I'm wait. I want. I want to see what he does. I'm interested. Okay. So Minka Fitzpatrick, according to NFL.com, was traded from Miami to Pittsburgh along with a 2020 fourth round pick and a 2021 seventh round pick. The Steelers gave the Dolphins a first and fifth round pick for 2020 and a sixth round pick in 2021. I think it's worth it. I do too. As a Steelers fan, seeing our safeties get burned, I want to see Micah Fitzpatrick do well. I think he can do well. The fact that Mike Tomlin was talking about when they scouted him when he came out when we drafted a safety that same draft class. So the fact that we got one really good safety in Micah Fitzpatrick and then another good safety as well. I mean, the back end, it's it's sealed. I mean, super excited to see what we can do with it. Definitely worth a first-round pick because as a Steelers fan, I definitely know we suck at drafting good defensive backs. So this is definitely worth a first-round pick in my opinion. Since we're talking about the NFL, we can't talk about the NFL forever without talking about Antonio Brown recently. Sorry, everyone's probably tired of hearing it, but we have to talk about it. He's now with New England, who looks like they're going literally all or nothing this year, which is weird to say about New England, who already has six rings in the last decade. But Antonio Brown caught his first touchdown pass this week against Miami, uh, so he's officially you know, warmed up to that team. They dropped the charges against him, so he's not going to get suspended for the sexual harassment abuse allegations that went out against him from his personal trainer. So he's there in New England. He's playing. He is their top receiver now, so we'll see how he ends this year with the best team in the league i'm gonna say it again i just said it but i'm gonna say it again who can beat that receiving core you got edelman antonio brown and you got josh gordon who's gonna have philip dorsett who's gonna beat that and with brady and throwing throwing the rock i I can't i can't see i can't see any secondary that can that can even remotely come close to that yes all right so we're going to our next trade so we're going to talk about just a couple more trades let's just go through them a little bit all right uh, a little quick here, Jadavion Clowney. What do you guys think about that trade? I love it. I think it's. I think it's great. I think Houston's gonna miss him. Uh, JJ will be gone soon. I think that he was good enough to stay on the defensive front. But I think the Seahawks have had an amazing off season. I mm-hmm. think with how they revamped that defensive line, I think it's been good. It would be uh, good for Seattle. Bad for Houston. Yeah. Just so you guys know, also Demarius Thomas getting traded to the Jets. Uh, well, Jets have a quarterback now, so. Yeah, that's true. But I think he he's back to being a number two receiver yeah. uh, once, once, Donald, once Donald comes back and he will be back I Demarius Thomas is going to really help that, that offense. Demarius Thomas will really help that offense by dropping crucial open passes <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all right and th- this is the last trade I want to talk about Laramie Tunsil I think the best trade for the Dolphins not so good of a trade for the Texans what are your guys' takes <laughs> what <laughs> what were the Dolphins thinking you're trying to rebuild a team what you need to build a team build build <laughs> what you need to build a team 
is a veteran offensive lineman, one of the best in the league up front to coach up these younger people. The team building process starts up front. And Laramie Tunstall is one of the best offensive linemen in the league. And they gave up, honestly, next to nothing for him. Yeah. Horrible trade by Miami. Yeah, I agree. Miami's in a state that they need to re they need to just start from square one and then just rebuild from the from the ground up. And I think this this I true I too believe this is a really, really bad move. They're starting from season, underground. Yeah, in a season that's already in with bad mood. Yes. Speaking of the Dolphins, let's have a quick chat about the Miami Dolphins. Will they go 0 and 16? I think that's the consensus because what they got outscored like 110 to like maybe 10 or 14 points the past two weeks. What do you guys think? Well, first, let's just go through the schedule. On Sunday, they will be playing the Cowboys at home. Which that's a is, loss. Yeah. Then you got the next week, you got the Chargers. That's a loss. That's Let me just get the this. They're going 0 and 16. <laughs> this is the worst team I have ever seen ever. Worse than the 08 Lions. Redskins, the Bills, the Steelers, the Jets, the Colts, the Bills again, the Browns, the Eagles, the Jets again, the Giants, the Bengals, and then they end their season against the Patriots. If if they win the game, it'll be against a QB-less Jets. They still won't get it done because they can't score. The Dolphins have been outscored this season by 102-3. Uh, to three. Wow. It, it's an insane margin. I think that just because this is how the NFL works, Dolphins, if they get a win, it's going to be against a team that's going to the playoffs or is riding for a playoff spot. Because that's how the NFL works. <laughs> yeah, true. true. So either that, they're going to go in 16. I I've been telling you guys all day today and yesterday, I've been saying this, that if you're the Dolphins and you're that GM, you need to start making your pitch for players now, even the draft picks. Because as a draft pick, you can still refuse to go to a franchise. And asked to be traded somewhere. So I would, it's week three in the season, I know, but please just start making your pitch. Why is your team gonna win the next three to five years? Because obviously you're not gonna win next year, maybe not the year after that, but what building blocks do you have? What, well, obviously none because you talked about Laramie Tunsil. What building blocks are you gonna get then? Because you have three first round draft picks, so what are you gonna do with that? Something I still don't understand what Miami is doing is that they got Ryan Fitzpatrick and he was their starting quarterback, but instead of Ryan Fitz magic, you get Ryan Fitz tragic, which leads to two pick sixes in two straight games. That's four pick sixes, and he's still starting for the week three. Start Josh Rosen. You can't get any worse than what Fitzpatrick has given you. Just go in and trade quarterback. The only way that it gets worse is that Ryan Fitzpatrick throws six pick sixes in the same in the same quarter. That's the mm -hmm. only way you could get any worse. I mean, they might as well just trade from Nathan Peterman, honestly. We well, yeah, Dolphins are in a state of rebuilding. Yeah. I if they win, it's probably and I hate to be I hate to be mean, but it'll probably be the Redskins. It, the Redskins are the Redskins are a team that's also in a state also sort of in a state of rebuilding. I think the Wayne Haskins they do do they need to start putting his they need to start putting the ball in his hands for a, a little bit so he can so he can sort of feel out that offense but that i feel like it's the only team that they can feasibly win other than that all right so now we're gonna go into teams that are undefeated but won really easy games so let, we got some teams here we got the bills we got the ravens got the 49ers we got the cowboys who will and won't make the playoffs in this group what you guys got 49ers and ravens will make the playoffs the Bills won't. And I'm skeptical on the Cowboys. I will say this. The Ravens have they played the Dolphins in their first their first game. That was easy. They made it look like it was nothing. But the last game against the Cardinals was a while still while still pretty close, still felt like the Ravens completely outplayed the Cardinals in every sense of the word. Justin gave a pretty big reaction when you said 49ers. Yeah, I, I know. It's I didn't true. think I never thought I was gonna say that, but they they just even with against easy teams, they look so, so solid. Jimmy G, he's he may not be he may not be the savior again. He's not the savior of the 49ers, but he still looked really good in all of the games that he's played. Uh, I think he I think with an with the right with the right back with you know with the right backfield he he that offense could probably take them to a playoffs. They won't they won't be like they won't finish top of the division. I feel like they'll just they'll get like the number the six seed. But I do I can I can see them in the playoffs. Same with the Ravens. Me, I I have them winning the division, but I even then, if they don't, I feel like they'll still be fifth or sixth. Okay, all right. Cowboys are the only team of these four that are going to make the playoffs, I think. The Ravens, I say if they have a good game against the Chiefs, I'll put the Ravens on that list. But right now, they played two easy teams, and I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. 
I think that Lamar Jackson, he has looked good, but he hasn't played a good defense. Even though the Chiefs aren't a good defense, they're better defenses than the previous two that they've played. I mean, we've already talked about the Bills. I really like Josh Allen. I think he's a good quarterback, but they just don't have the pieces to make the playoffs. 49ers, Jimmy G's a good quarterback. I think he's a middle-of-the-pack in quarterbacks, though. I think their team is a little bit too inexperienced. So they have, a, I think they have a good receiving core. But I think they got a couple of tests coming up. They got the Steelers this next week looking for a win, even though it's in San Francisco. It's going to be a big test for them. But I think for any of these teams, really, especially the 49ers and the Ravens for me, if they win a couple of key games, I will definitely consider saying that they're going to be a playoff team. But right now, I just got the Cowboys. Their offense has been looking good, even though they've been playing bad teams. They're playing a bad team again than the Dolphins. But I think out of these four teams they're the only one that really has a big fighting chance to make the playoffs. i think as the day we're recording this the ravens are the hardest team to analyze in the nfl we'll see a lot this week against the chiefs which if you listen to this you've probably already seen that game but they're, they're hard to analyze so it de- their playoff completely depends on cleveland how cleveland can pull themselves together is if Baltimore will or will not make the playoffs. The Chiefs don't have to talk about it. Of course they're going to make the playoffs. Of course they're going to win that division. The Chargers do not look like the Chargers we thought we might see earlier in the year. And the Broncos and Raiders are the Broncos and Raiders, of course. The 49ers say, the NFC is not looking as tough as I thought it would at first. With Drew Brees out, that could massively shake things up. I think that the NFC North is looking a lot weaker than it did. I think the Bears are falling off huge time. I think the Vikings still have a lot to work with. And I think the Packers are another team hard to analyze. We'll see how they go throughout the year. I think the 49ers do have a chance to make it. I think they'll be in the wild card fighting spot at the end of the year. They won't win the division. That's the Rams division, but they'll get the wild card spot maybe. All right. I I see it. I see it. All right, so now let's talk about undefeated teams in general. We just got done talking about teams that won their first two games only because they were easy games. So we're going to talk about these undefeated teams. Who's the best? So for those of you who don't know who's undefeated going into week three, we got the Patriots, the Bills, the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Cowboys, the Rams, the 49ers, the Packers, and the Lions. So first, let's talk about these undefeated teams, then we'll get to the winless teams later. But who's the best out of these teams, guys? Patriots. Yeah, hands, hands down. I think the Patriots are the best team in the league. I don't think that we can have any argument against that, and it's sad. No one's a Patriots fan. If you're a Patriots fan, come on, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but I think they are the, the best too. team. <laughs> Last year, I said it a couple times, that was not the best Patriots team ever, and they still won the Super Bowl. This could be the best Patriots team ever this might if they do have a 19 in their season this is the year they do it yeah I can't agree with you more I could honestly think that we're gonna have a Patriots Rams rematch in the Super Bowl I, I think don't think the, the Rams will make it this year I think the Rams are the best team in the NFC right now you do yeah well we'll see how things play out oh yeah there'll be a lot of teams going up and down and because think about this I mean we're talking about oh big Patriots are the best team in the NFL we're not accounting for stuff that happens off the field and injuries. We're not accounting for any of that right now. So this could all go out the window. If Tom, I, I don't want Tom Brady to get hurt. I'm putting that out there right now. But if Tom Brady gets hurt, this could all go out the window. I mean, Jared Stenham, he's a pretty decent backup, but maybe not enough to win the amount of games you think they're going to win now. I did see something early about how Tom Brady's uh, out of practice right now with a calf injury. Interesting. And it won't keep him out, I mean, it's but gonna... it's something that's bothering him. So That's true. Yeah, I. What can be said about this Patriots team that hasn't already been said before? It it's it's gotten to the point where it's getting repetitive. We're trying to find new things to talk about about the Patriots. Look, I love the Packers, and they're, that's my team. But there's, they can't hold a candle to the Patriots. They're, they're, they are the best team in the league. Best team in the AFC. Best team in the league. And then we have the Lions out here, who is technically undefeated, one zero and one with that tie against Arizona, and then they come out and miraculously win last week. They should and whoa. <laughs> they did. Congratulations to Detroit. You didn't look terrible. You won a good game out there. So I think that they're there. They exist. I think that they're the worst of the undefeated teams, but, you know, they're around. They'll be in the middle of the pack by the end of the season. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about these winless teams. So I'll say the winless teams, and then we'll talk about who needs to panic now and who's okay out of these winless teams. Mm-hmm. So we have the Dolphins. Let's not even talk about them, okay? We already panic, said, it. We already pan- said they're it. not even panicking. They're just they're they know. <laughs> they are. It's like code orange. Like again, complete rebuild. All right, Giants, Redskins, Cardinals, Jaguars, Bengals, Broncos, Jets, Panthers, and Steelers. All right, first question: Who needs to panic now besides the Dolphins? Obviously, to only pick one of these. Jets. Just just one. The Jets. The Jets. They had no quarterback. But if he picked the Jets, so I guess I got to go someone else. Mm, the Giants. 
Interesting. I know Daniel Jones is starting this. Uh, Daniel Jones is starting this week, and we'll, that, that's, this is going to be a proving task for 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 DJ. Um, I'm but Giants do need. They got some stuff they need to work on. I'm going to say the Panthers because their defense hasn't looked as good as I thought it was. Cam Newton is not a good quarterback. I mean, not as good as he used to be. I mean, now he's hurt, and they're going to start their backup. And I think Cam's still wanting to start, though. He hasn't been rolled out yet. No. But they're know. already talking about starting the backup, though. And I just think with all that being said, like I think this is going to be a Panthers team that gets a top five pick in the draft and maybe – um, looking at a guy, maybe not on defense because they have Luke Keekley to get that defense down. Um, their offense is okay. I could definitely see him get an offensive lineman, though, and t- as a top five pick in the draft, but I think they're going to be down there. So who do you guys think is, okay, we're cool. Like, we don't have to worry about being 0-2. We're fine. We're okay. Um, I have two picks on this one. I have, I have, I have two as well. The Bengals and the Broncos, I think they're both all right. They're not gonna, I don't think either one are going to make the playoffs, but they're all right. There's no need to panic on your team. Keep what you have and build upon it, and then in the future, you might be good. I think that John Ross is the most surprising thing in the NFL right now. The Bengals are playing all right. I think that the Broncos still have potential to have a top five defense. They need to start playing like it. I think Joe Flacco just needs to get used to the system they're in. I think they need to utilize Philip Lindsay more, but I think that they're all right. I feel like the Seals and the Redskins are the ones that I feel like they, they, they can calm down. They, they're, not completely, they're not completely in shambles. Again, Red, the Redskins... Not necessarily the best team, but they still feel like uh, they're not. They're not gonna. Comp- they're not competing in the East. They, there's no way they compete in the East. But I mean, they seem like they're an okay. They they played a. Um, they played. They looked good against the Eagles when they played, but then they just fell apart. But and that and I think that's their issue. The Steelers. We've already talked about it. Mason Rudolph. He he'll, he'll be fine. He will be fine. Okay. Yeah, since you guys picked two teams, I guess I have to pick two teams too. Uh, I'm going to pick the Steelers, obviously. This is the one team that should panic, but they're not going to panic. They don't need to panic. Mason Rudolph, I think, is going to do all right. Our defense is now getting even more solid with the addition of Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, I think we're the one team that, again, should panic, but I don't think we need to panic because we're playing. uh, We're in a tough division this year. I I think every team in our division has a chance at making the playoffs right now, but... I think we still have a pretty good shot even winning our division. Other team I have, so I talked about them earlier. I talked about how this team, because of a quarterback injury, m- might not make the playoffs. I think they have a decent shot at the playoffs. Uh, a lot of people had high hopes on this team because of a quarterback they signed in free agency. I'm going to go with the Jaguars. I think they could possibly make a run at the end of the season. I think they can run with Minshew, like you said, and possibly even if Foles comes back. And I think their defense, I just still needs to improve. But this all hinges on whether Jalen Ramsey gets traded or not. If Jalen Ramsey gets traded, that that all goes out the window. They they need to panic if Jalen Ramsey gets traded. Fournette needs to start playing like the top tier running back who he used to be. Thank That's you. what I'm saying. Yep. If, I mean, with Leonard, with you got a back like Leonard Fournette, you sh- dude, that running that run that rush that running game should be solid. But it just it seems like there's something not there, and it's because he's not getting as many carries as he should. All right, moving on. One more segment we have for you. Uh, um, hot takes. We're gonna do hot takes every time we do a podcast. Hot takes are gonna be a different topic. We this week we're gonna pick most surprising player so far. We each get to pick one player in the NFL who's most surprised you. In my opinion, I gotta go John Ross. He's gone out there. He's leading the league, and as a receiver right now, he's the number one receiver in the NFL. It, I think it's very surprising uh, to see someone who people were calling bust last year who's now leading the NFL in week two. All right. Man, I was going to pick John Ross. I think that's everybody's pick right now, to be completely honest. And change his number, and then he's a whole different player. I was going to, as a Steelers fan, I definitely want to pick Mason Rudolph. But I was talking about this guy earlier, not Mason Rudolph, but another quarterback who lost two games but has looked better, surprised me. Gardner Minshew. Again, it's the fourth time you brought him up today. You like Gardner. I like I liked him in college, dude, and I think he's a good fit for this offense. Uh, I don't know how many wins he's going to get this season, but he has definitely put him uh, put in his mark on that offense. And when Nick Foles comes back after the season, there I guarantee there's either going to be a QB competition or Minshew's going to go to a team that needs a quarterback. He has put his place in this league and the fact that he's been doing good with not as known receivers like that is amazing to me yep so all these picks have been really good i'm gonna pick one that's surprisingly bad boy howdy i didn't think baker mayfield was gonna be as bad as he was Hmm. 
I, 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 you, you guys know I was high on Baker. I, I'm real. I'm high on Baker Mayfield. I think the dude's astounding. He's great for the Browns, but he, the last two games were terrible for him. They have been, be all right. I, I, he, he will be. They'll, he'll, they'll turn. The Browns will turn up in the, the Browns will turn up in after the latter half of the season. But my, my gosh, is that when the player of your team right now and with the Browns is Odell Beckham's watch? Yeah, I didn't think he was that bad against the Jets. If this was after Week One, I would definitely say yes. Like he's the player I'm most surprised with. But yeah, like you guys said, I think he'll be fine. All right, so now we're going to go Week Three picks. So we're going to get. Allende is going to name these games out, and we're just going to go through. We're not going to talk about them in detail. We're just going to say who will win this uh, these games this week. All right, so we got our Thursday night football game, the Titans at the Jaguars. Who we got? Titans. Jaguars. Yeah, I actually have the Jaguars going to win this game. Justin's dancing. <laughs> he liked the Jaguars so <laughs> much, man. All right, and then we now we get to our Sunday games. First Sunday game is the Dolphins and the Cowboys. I think we all can agree. It's going to be the Miami game. Miami Dolphins. <laughs> Miami. No, just kidding. Yeah. The Cowboys are going to win Miami that game. Miami who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and after that, we got the Bengals and the Bills. This one actually might be really hard. I'm, I'm going to go with the Bengals on this one. I'm going to go Bengals. They've played. Um, they didn't play good in week two, but I think that we'll see the week one Bengals and they'll get the win. Yep. I agree with that one. Next is going to be the Lions and the Eagles. Say it with me now. It's it's gonna be the Eagles. It has to be the Eagles. I, I can't see. I even even with a receiving core that's in, completely injured, still think they're they're a much more solid team. You know, Andy, I don't think I'm gonna say that one with you. Oh. I don't think I'm going to. I got Detroit pulling out the shocker. Yeah. Philly just got a bunch of injuries. I don't know how much they can come back. I don't even know if Wentz will play. He looked like he was gonna. He looked bothered last week. But also, I think this is a hot take. I think that the Eagles could be, and don't take me on my word, but take me on my word. I think the Eagles can beat the Lions with Josh McCown as their quarterback. All right. All right. Next is the Jets and the Patriots. Now, this one we can all say together. One, two, three. Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> Patriots. <laughs> Patriots. Um, after that, we got the Falcons and the Colts. Another interesting game. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go Atlanta. They're my team, so I believe. I'm actually going to go with the Colts in this one. I have faith in Jacoby Brissett. If Matt Ryan leaves the locker room today, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Colts, yeah. Uh, after that, we got the Raiders and the Vikings. 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 Let's go Raiders. I can definitely... Now, granted, they did stop Devontae Freeman, but also I saw in week two that Devontae Freeman can't run the ball. So mm -hmm. I think it, the Raiders will get the win if Josh Jacobs can have a good game. So I'm going to go Raiders here. Dalvin Cook is a top five running back right now, though. So. That's true. That's true. It's going to be a... I think if the Raiders do win, it's a close game. If the Vikings win, it's a blowout. Mm -hmm. um, next, we got the Ravens and the Chiefs. Had the Chiefs winning, but I don't think it'll be as I don't think it's gonna be the as big as the win is gonna be as big as everyone thinks. I think Lamar will be exposed when he's trying to keep up with another high paced quarterback. Yeah. I think he's gonna make mistakes and Mahomes is gonna lead that team to a twenty something point deficit. To win. The Chiefs win, are gonna win. win. Yeah. I think yeah, Chiefs are gonna win this game. Pat Mahomes is probably gonna face the best defense he's faced, but he's still gonna win by at least two touchdowns. Next we got the Broncos and the Packers. I don't. I don't need to say it. Y'all can just go ahead. I gotta go with my boys. This is a hard one for me. I like. I think that this one could swing either way. I just said I don't think the Broncos need to panic. I think that this team is better than only three, and I think that Green Bay's not three no caliber. I think Green Bay's all right. I think that they could very well win the North, but you know I'm still high that the Broncos can turn things around. So I'm gonna pick Denver. It all depends on it for me. If it comes down to Joe Flacco down four points, Packers are gonna win that game. Because uh, we saw on Sunday, Flacco can't do that. Even though he got a second chance and then he did do that. Got the two-point conversion, almost got the win. Um, but I'm going to go with the Broncos here. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, Panthers and Cardinals. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was quick. Giants and Buccaneers. 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 Um, I'm going to go with the New York Saquons on this one. The New York Saquons. <laughs> okay, I will say Daniel Jones is going to have a decent game for his first start. I will say nope. that. You don't think so? I, I've hated um, on Dan Daniel Jones since he got drafted. I know you have. So, same with <laughs> Kyler Murray. Okay, yeah, let's true. move on. Uh, we're gonna, next is the Saints and the Seahawks. Seahawks. First game without Drew Brees starting in a long time. Since he joined the Saints, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, I'm going to go Seahawks on this one. I'm actually going to pull for the Saints in this one. Breeze was injured for like a whole year one time. Yeah. But I, I've, not in the Saints. I, I feel like Teddy's I feel like Teddy's not going to be too terrible. Like, I feel like he's, even though he hasn't been on, he hasn't really played on the team, I feel like he, he'll still fit pretty well. And I think the Seahawks, while they're really great, while they're pretty good right now, they're not going to be, the, they're still not going to be able to top them. Okay. Texans Chargers. 
Chargers. No. I want to say the Chargers, and not because I have Philip hmm. Rivers as my my starting quarterback. Ooh, that's a this is gonna be a good game. I think I this is gonna be a better game than a lot of people think. I think the Texans will pull this one off. I keep going back and forth on this one, but right in this very second, the Moon Man will be Chargers. Just ask me five minutes from now, it'll probably change. <laughs> uh, now we got the Steelers and 49ers. Look, I, I have the Steelers winning. This I got one. the 49ers. I got the Steelers winning. I think this is the game. To be honest, Steelers season is on the line. I think I don't think we can win seven or eight games in a row, which is what it's going to take for us to make the playoffs. This is our season. We need to win. Our Sunday night football game is the Rams and the Browns. Man, the Rams are going to destroy the Rams. Browns. Yeah, Rams. Sorry, say that again? I said Rams. Okay, well, I thought you said Browns. <laughs> no. And then we have our Monday night football game is the Bears at the Redskins. Redskins will get their first win this season. Bears. I think to pull it together. They're I'm going to say the Redskins season. and not just because they're they're, they're my, the Bears it's, are minus North Rivals. It's in Washington, right? That yes, does help. It's okay. in Washington. It does yeah. help that it's in Washington. All right, and finally, our last segment of the day, we end with it all the time. It's time for Way Too Early Predictions. Yes. And, again, for this segment, if you haven't heard us before, we go through, it's super early in the season, we're going to just go through who's going to make the playoffs and who's going to win the Super Bowl. That's what we're going to go through. So, starting with the AFC, who you guys got winning each division? All right, so let's go AFC North first. I got the, that's a really hard division. Man, I'm still going to go with the Browns right now. I know they still got some work to do. I want to say the Steelers, but that's super biased. And right now, it doesn't look like we're going to win that division. Uh, I kind of want to say the Ravens, but I just think, I, for some reason, I just have in my mind, I'm probably really biased, but I think they're going to implode. I'm going to pick the Browns for that one. I think it's going to, I think the in, for the North, I think the Ravens are going to win, but it's going to be really close by a game. Uh, the Ravens are going to win. It's going to depend on Cleveland, but I think the Ravens got it. All right, AFC South, uh, I'm just going to go through the rest of the divisions. So AFC South, right now I got the Colts winning that division. Uh, AFC East, obviously Patriots are going to win that division. AFC West, Chiefs are going to win that division. Uh, now in the NFC NFC East, that's a tough one. I think it all depends on if Carson Wentz is healthy. Uh, right now it looks like the Cowboys are going to win that division. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. What we got next? Uh, NFC South, uh, right now, I mean, technically the Bucks are first in that division. Technically, that's not how it's going to be at the end of the year. Uh, I think what's going to happen is Drew Brees is going to come back and is going to light the NFL. Saints are still going to win that division, I think. Uh, then you have the NFC West. Rams are obviously going to win that division. And then you got the NFC North. This is a weird division, a really weird division. I think the Packers have the better team of any team, unless the Lions can somehow keep on the streak that they're on or the Bears can somehow fix their offense in the middle of the season. I want to get a, a sound of silence playing a zoom in on Nyanda's face when you said AFC North is a weird division. The sad. If you can see the shoulders, if you can see my shoulders right now, I'm just doing like a little wave. All right, so I'm going to go through the divisions just like Justin did. I just said that I think that the NFC North will go to Baltimore. The AFC East, of course, New England. AFC South, I think that Tennessee could pull it out. I think that they can do it. I like this Tennessee team. We'll see how they play the rest of the year. And then the AFC West the Chiefs. Um, so the NFC North, I have a close, I mean close one between all four teams. Best division in the league, in my opinion. Uh, see, I still think the Bears have a good team. I think that Green Bay will end up dropping off. I'm gonna go with Minnesota on this one. The East, I gotta give it to Dallas. The South, I gotta give it to my Dirty Birds down in Atlanta. And then over West, easily the Rams. Alright, I guess I'm gonna do the same thing too, since, um, so AFC East I don't think I don't think you need to say that it's gonna be the Patriots, the best team in the league. AFC West, I have the Chiefs, Chargers being really close. Um, AFC North, I again I have the Ravens, but I'm only winning, but it'll only be by a game. And then the AFC South, I'm with you on the Colts, man. I'm high on the Colts now. Believe it, believe it or not. Uh, all right, and NFC East again, depending on how Carson Wentz, depending on Carson Wentz and whether or not he's healthy, could be the Eagles. But right now I got the Cowboys. They just they just look really good. NFC West, I got the Rams. Everyone's got the Rams. The Rams got the Rams. The NFC South, I'm gonna go. I th I feel like Drew Brees is gonna after, when Drew Brees comes back, Saints the Saints are gonna light up the division. And yeah, the NFC North gotta go with the gotta go with my boys, the Green Bay, the King Kings in the North. Hopefully, um, they look really good. Didn't you just say earlier the 49ers are gonna make the playoffs? I said they. <laughs> I didn't say they win the division. I said they make the playoffs. Oh, uh, that's true. That's true. All, All right. right. Super Bowl? Uh, now we gotta do our wild cards. Oh, we gotta do wild cards? Yeah. Okay, okay. All playoffs. So, two wild cards. Two, uh, two from each. Chargers, Browns. NFC? NFC, I got... Hmm. 
Vi- I got the Vikings, and this is probably going to be this is this is going to be bold. But I think the 49ers, like I said, all right, there it yeah. is. No, you don't have Atlanta making the playoffs, man. All right, I'll see. <laughs> all right, Justin, who you got? All right, AFC. So Steelers are going to make the playoffs, and I also think that it's got to be an AFC South team. So I'm definitely going to go with what? Did you just say the Steelers are going to make the playoffs? Yes. He I, has faith. All right. I all right. have faith okay. in our guy. But AFC South team that's going to make the playoffs, I think the Titans. They look pretty good, pretty decent right now. NFC, definitely have to go with the Falcons. Get them. Uh, and then another team I could definitely see making the playoffs are the Eagles. I could see the Eagles making it and barely beating out the Vikings for that spot. All right. Um, so my law card spots in the AFC are uh, the Dolphins and the Jets, of course, um, obviously. <laughs> no. uh, so the AFC, I'm going to go Chargers and... Oof. It's tough. I'm not a Colts believer. I'm not a Colts believer. I'm going to go Houston. And over in the NFC, I've got Packers and the Saints. I think, At least you have them in the playoffs. I think the 49ers and Seahawks are close, but I think they'll both miss out. All right, finally, Super Bowl. Also, I completely forgot about the Seahawks. Can I change my pick? I'm going to change it from the Eagles to the Seahawks. Uh, I completely forgot about them. Um, all right, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. I'm going to keep myself consistent. Last time I said New England and Atlanta rematch, I'm going to go New England and Atlanta rematch again. I think that Atlanta can still pull it together. I think Matt Ryan will finally get his team together. I lo- First defense I've forever that I like with Atlanta. And then the New England's just unstoppable. I mean, come on. No one's going to beat New England in the AFC. Ring number seven, probably. I mean, come yeah. on. All right, so I'm def- Seahawks Steelers. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just wanted to say it because I want to <laughs> hear the Steelers in the Super Bowl. Okay. Patriots are obviously going to make the Super Bowl. Last time I said uh, Patriots-Falcons, just like you said, I-, I think the Falcons dropped off a little bit, um, especially, like you said, injuries on the offensive line. Uh, honestly, the NFC to me is like a jump ball, but I'm just going to – I said it earlier. I think the Rams are going to make it back. Yeah, I think it's no it's no doubt that the Patriots are going back to the Super Bowl. Right I, now, right yeah, now. Right now, it looks like the Patriots are just they're, – they're, they're a shoe in. Again, this is all that depends on how Drew Brees comes back what, what, and what Drew Brees comes back. If Drew Brees can come back and light up the South, I feel like the Saints could go to the Super Bowl. If not, I got the Rams. There's a New England, New Orleans Super Bowl. I'm not watching. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, thank you. This has been Beyond the Blitz 2019 Week 3 edition. Please join us in two more weeks where we will have the Week 5 edition. My name has been Brandon Wells. And my name has been Justin Rogers. My name has been Ayende Roberts. And thank all of you very much for spending this time with us. And we will see you next time on... Beyond the Blitz.